And that takes us to our main event of the prelims. And man, it's going to be a dandy. We got a bantamweight bout between Dominic Cruz and our boy Casey Kenny here. You know, one thing that stood out, Dominic Cruz, man, he should actually uh, team up with the other Cruz for a modeling line, man. They have very similar Calvin Klein underwear pictures. <laughs> Uh, Cruz is like one of those guys where yeah, it's probably just a, a they need to maybe do a retake or something. But uh, I, I miss that guy. He, he, he just having him back in a fighter way is just such a great, great thing. You know, I, I miss him. Oh, for sure. I mean, like, you know, like Siraj said, this guy did take a four year break after his loss to Garbrandt. Uh, you know, he did return in 2020 only to fight Henry Saudo. <laughs> you know, we all know about this man, what a beast he is. So, and we just you know, talked about I, these, I puffed, these, like, these records that are really puffed, right? Look at this record, right? 22 mm-hmm. and three. And you look at the people. and three. Well, and you, look at the, and you look at the people that he's fought, right? Like, we're talking about a bunch of guys who are 16 and two and, and, and 18 and one or whatever. But this man's 22 mm-hmm. and three is some real shit. It's some real shit. It's legit. It's legit, mm-hmm. eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, you know, let's touch on that Segudo fight a little bit, you know, rewatching that one. It seemed like he wasn't really able to handle the leg kicks as much as he kind of should have. It, it seemed like Segudo really honed in on that aspect of it mm-hmm. and really broke him down in that sense. Well, I think Segudo in general just became a better MMA fighter, right? Like, the guy's an absolute workhorse. Mm-hmm. Like, as much as cringeworthy he is and as funny you think he is, the guy's an Olympic <laughs> athlete. He He's he's why I considered him one of the pound for pounds before he really even became a pound for pounds, because you saw it. His, his learning ability and, his, and just how much he got better was, was probably my favorite part of the whole thing, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I was a huge believer in him. And that's where, for me, if you lose to Henry Cejudo, to me, once again, I don't care how good you are, including Dominic Cruz, that's a very credible loss in this world, you know? And and mm-hmm. that goes to that goes to show, right? Dominic Cruz's three losses, two of them came in his last two fights, where he's very much, you know, still trying to keep it all together. But the man is known for how hard he trains, the amount of injuries he's taken. He even talked about going into that Cejudo fight, how he had like a blown shoulder and like a bunch of things that even required surgery, things like that. It was just a mm-hmm. constant like broken bones he mentioned. And it was a short notice fight with five weeks of preparation. So at the end of the day, the man is just an absolute legend, Hall of Famer level fighter, uh, probably the greatest bantam weight we might have ever seen. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, but yeah, mm-hmm. he's, 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 he's a big deal in my opinion. And I think there's a big reason why he, he took the fight with Casey Kenny, right? Casey Kenny and him are from Tucson, Arizona. So he was saying how, you know, big reason he was like, yeah, you know, kid's a good kid. He's from the same city as me. Let's put Tucson on the map. What are the chances that two guys from Tucson get to fight on the same card? So I think it's pretty fun that, that both these guys are going to have that, that opportunity to enjoy it together. Right. Yeah, that, that's really dope. I had no idea. So that's a, that's a pretty cool anecdote mm-hmm. right there. And, you know, Casey Kenny, his name seems to keep popping up for us, right? Uh, mm-hmm. He had a very active 2020 with four fights. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he's won three in a row. You know, looking back at that last one that we, you know, touched on pretty heavily with Nathaniel Wood, you know, that one really stands out. He, he dominated in that one. He really mm-hmm. dictated the pace. He had a ton of energy, especially in that third round when – you know, Wood was a little more tired. This guy just that that machine was still going, and, and that's where it's so funny, right? I, I I anticipate this fight very much looking like two guys just really moving a lot. Like you're going to see just two guys moving a mm-hmm. whole lot in the octagon uh, when these two get in there. Because if you look at the way Kenny even approached that fight in the third round, you know, Nathaniel Wood was definitely taking shots, but I, I thought there was still an opportunity for both of them to even take that fight even in the third. But yeah, like Kenny's pursuit his ability to kind of just get on you. And Nathaniel Wood is a great striker, but I think Kenny is very much, you know, showing that he can do it all. And even in that fight, at any point in time, when he had to kind of showcase that, he, he really did. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so, you know, this one's going to be super tight. It, it, it's hard to pick a, a side on this one, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll let you take a stab at, at the lean here. Where do you see the favorite being? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, two fight skid, Cody Garbrandt, Cejudo, right? I mean, I, I, for mm-hmm. me, th- this man is basically saying that the top 10 are all credible fighters and could all be a champion on any given day, right? Legitimately fight a hundred times for a championship. Maybe they, they squeeze one out. <laughs> this is the first time Dominic Cruz has been on a prelim since 2014 when he fought to Kim Mizugaki. Isn't that wow. insane? Isn't that insane? That bro? is nuts. 
Like, I, I just can't believe it. I, I, I absolutely can't believe it. And on any other given card, this guy's a, this is a main card fight. Let's be real here. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, this could have headlined one of these cards we've been watching. But uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to still have to go with Cruz with the edge here. I believe that we're playing a public play. Um, I will say that I actually do believe – and, and Dominic Cruz says it himself. He actually made the joke. Uh, I think Arrow Holwani was the one that said to him uh, – you uh you know a bunch of people are, are, are calling it bullshit and oh my god how dare you put dominic cruz on a prelim or how dare you only give him casey kenny you know he deserves this and dominic cruz is like yeah, well you know there's a lot of politics behind it i mean i understand those policies and i think it's actually a great opportunity to just showcase you know some of the prelims and be that main event that goes into there but the big thing for him is like you know thanks guys you know he really he made it seem like it was like a a compliment of, of some kind that people would even think that <laughs> but he also kind of went along lines of but those people also kind of don't do fights and, and don't really know what's going on <laughs> he was pretty honest about it so <laughs> then, that's kind of leading into my line right like from a vegas perspective i'm still gonna have to go with cruz as a favorite because i don't see people giving up on him in that sense but in mm-hmm. lining up with Cruz, I do not believe people should be as outraged as they are, which is why I'll give him a line of minus 125. Oh, man. I got to change mine now. <laughs> I was actually, I, you know, I, I'm going to go with the pick'em. I, I, I thought this would be a pick'em. Yeah, that's, that's um, perfectly. That, I, I mean, these lines, anything below <laughs> minus 130 to me kind of dabbles around there anyway. Dabbles, yeah. So let's see what the actual line here is. Wow, it is minus one twenty-five, but it's minus one twenty-five for Kenny. Yeah. So there so, you go, it's, man. It's, it's, it's pretty much a pick'em, yeah. Yeah. Well, like, it's just funny, right? Because the like, Cruz is not lying to you guys, man. Kenny's a great fighter. Yeah. He's a great fighter, and I'm not surprised by hey. that line at all. This is going to be a, a tough one to call for sure. Plus one hundred on Cruz. That seems a little enticing. Yeah, well, here's my big thing. I'm going to say even from a non, you know, lines perspective thing, I just want to see Cruz go into a fight as healthy as possible and come out of a fight Mm -hmm. as healthy as possible with the notion that win or lose, potentially we get to see him fight one more time. The guy doesn't need the money. Again, yeah. We've seen him win belts. I've seen a Dominic Cruz version, bro, that I will keep in my memory bank for the rest of my life. If he enjoys fighting and we can keep seeing him stay healthy, that's his biggest issue, right? The guy just is yeah. an absolute workhorse. Being that good at something, physical, takes its toll. Basically. Of course. <laughs> yeah, oh, hopefully uh, we get to see some more crews after this one. Mm-hmm. So that wraps up UFC 259. Man, what a treat that was. What Discussing it with you, I, can, yeah, I cannot wait to watch it. It's going to be a beauty. Make sure you don't miss this one. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell button. All our information is below. Always a pleasure, Siraj. This one was extra special, man. My man. It's, it's one of the best cards we'll probably see this year, maybe for a very long time. So I'm glad all these guys can get on there. Let's just hope they stay healthy. All right. Take care, my brother. Peace.